Hi, everybody, and welcome to Gulf Coast Wrestling. A tremendous uh, hour event coming up today. We have quite a bit coming your way. As a matter of fact, uh, why don't we get Al Roberts to tell us exactly what we're going to see on today's program. Okay, John, thank you, and uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to Gulf Coast Wrestling. Our first uh, match this afternoon is going to be Matt Rivera against Dick Dunn. We've uh, got Diamond Lil and Princess Little Dove. Midget Girls going to wrestle this afternoon. We've also got the Islanders against Ricky Fields and Georgia Sweet. You want to stick around for that. That'll be a two out of three fall uh, match. And we've got a standby match just in case we have some time left. The pro against Rip Tyler. And, of course, Al, the battle for the belts are getting a little more heated as we go on week to week. And we'll be telling you about all of those with special interviews with each of the wrestlers. But right now, let's take time out for this message. One fall with a 10-minute time limit. One fall, 10 minutes. Introducing in the corner of my right, weighing in at 229 pounds from Puerto Rico, Matt Rivero. Matt Rivera. His opponent, 222 pounds, East Lowry, Alabama, Dick Dunn. Dick Dunn. Larry Brock's a referee. One fall, 10 minutes. Okay, Al Roberts back, about ready to get underway. Uh, this is our first look at uh, Matt Rivera, and of course he's going up against the old peanut farmer himself, Dynamite Dick Dunn, and here is the action in the ring, and Al Roberts to call it for you. Thank you very much, John. Matt Rivera from Puerto Rico steps in with the side headlock to make the first move in uh, our first match in Gulf Coast Wrestling's edition here against Dick Dunn, 220-pounder from East Lowry. Been around a long time, knows all the moves about professional wrestling. Another side headlock. From the left side by Matt Rivera. Dick Dunn trying to break out of that hole. Can't quite do it as Rivera puts the pressure on now. Referee is Larry Brock. He asked Dick Dunn if he wants to give up already, and Dick Dunn says, uh uh. Rivera still with a headlock on Dick Dunn. As John said, this is our first look at. Rivera, but he comes in very highly touted. Dunn with a leg drop, takes him down for the count of one. Good move by Dick Dunn, breaking that headlock by Matt Rivera. They're in the ropes now. Dick Dunn forcing Rivera into the ropes. And there's a break. Nice takedown by Matt Rivera on Dick Dunn for the count of one. Rivera now has the arm bar on the left arm of Dick Dunn. Dunn drops down, breaks the hold, tries for the pin, but Rivera bridges out. Rivera goes back to the side headlock now from the left side. This is our first match, one fall, 10 minute time limit. Dick Dunn, locked down by Rivera. Rivera comes right back with that headlock. Rivera still with the advantage. Dick Dunn working on the chin trying to break it. Dick Dunn throws him off. Another body block. Down goes Dunn. Off the ropes comes Rivera. Over Dunn one time and comes right back into the headlock on Dick Dunn. I think Dunn was looking to uh, do a little body tossing there, but Rivera came in with a headlock and once again has the advantage on Dick Dunn. Dick Dunn picks up the leg, and of course, Rivera loses his balance and into the ropes. Clean break. Matt Rivera and Dick Dunn. Rivera with a nine pound advantage. He's 229. Dick Dunn in there with a hammerlock. Came out of that one nicely to take advantage of Matt Rivera right now. Trips him and puts him down. Dick Dunn on top now with the uh, hammerlock from the top. Rivera is on the mat. Very near the ropes. Referee Larry Block, uh, Brock over there checking. Rivera up on one knee now as Dunn puts some more pressure on that left arm of Matt Rivera. Now they go into the ropes. Referee Larry Brock calls for the break, and there it is. Out to the middle of the ring again. Dick Dunn down and under. Here he comes up with a hammerlock. Good move by Dick Dunn. There's a takedown again, lifting that leg. And he comes down on top of that arm. 
Referee Brock asking Rivera if he wants to give up, and he shakes his head no. You probably saw it. Dick Dunn now. Still with the advantage here on top of Matt Rivera. Rivera rolls to his back now for the count of one. Oh, almost the count of three, and he finally rolls on over. Once again, Rivera's on top for the count of one, the count of two again on Matt Rivera. The gun up in the knee comes into the left arm of Rivera. Rivera now trying to get up on one knee, does. Now they're in the standing position, Dick Dunn. With a hammerlock from the front side now, and he's uh, putting some pressure in there as he has that arm locked up pretty tight. You can see him lift up, actually picking Rivera off the map. Rivera, though, staggers and pushes Dick Dunn into the ropes. Referee calls for the break, and there it is, another clean break. There they go. Matt Rivera back to the headlock again. Dick Dunn with the body toss into the ropes. Rivera comes down with the block. Now with a headlock, takes him down for the count of no count yet. Dunn's elbow is off. Whoop, there's a count of one. His arm was off the mat as he came down. Rivera now has the headlock on Dick Dunn. Right in the middle of the ring. Matt Rivera with the advantage here as the advantage has switched hands uh, two or three times so far. Again, a body toss. Dick Dunn with a leg trip. Down goes Matt Rivera. And Dick Dunn again comes up with the hammerlock from the top side. Ooh, there goes a knee into that left arm. Dick Dunn with the pressure on. That seemed to be Dick's uh, favorite hold in this first match, while Rivera has uh, reverted to the headlock when he is in the offensive position. Rolling and rolling, they're near the rope. Referee Brock checks it out. They're very close to the rope. Dick Dunn with the advantage, talking to the referee, saying he's not out, he's still got the hold, and he's gonna make sure he's in that ring. There he goes, look at that pressure he puts on. Now Rivera! Reaches down and left that leg up. A toe hold by Matt Rivera. You could probably hear Dick Dunn answering the referee as he asked about a submission. Dick Dunn says no, he does not want to give up. Ten minute time limit here in our first fall. Still the uh, toe hold being Administered by Matt Rivera. Puts a little twist to it and now pulls back on the left leg of Dick Dunn. Matt Rivera now has a leg locked up and now he's working on the an arm bar on Dick Dunn. That's an interesting hold right there. Dunn unlocked his leg just enough to get Rivera into the rope and out of the ring, barely. He grabbed hold of that middle rope and barely kept his balance, but the hold was broken. Good move by Dick Dunn as he was able to force Rivera out of the ring. Back in the middle now, Dick Dunn and Rivera into the rope. Clean break. Dunn. Take down into an arm bar. Dick Dunn with the advantage now. This is where he switched hands a couple of times. From an excellent match. He's seeing some good holds and some uh, good execution. Dick Dunn, as we said, goes back into that hammerlock now, which seems to be his favorite hold this afternoon. You can hear Dick Dunn talking to Matt Rivera, saying, come on, give up, give up. But he's not. Dick Dunn still with the advantage. Rivera with the takedown on Dick Dunn breaks the hole. Good move. Shin lock now. Dick Dunn slips out into that hammerlock again. Both 
both men are up. Rivera, body trying to kick down with a block. Down goes Rivera. John with a takedown into an arm bar again. Good action by Dick John and Matt Rivera. Rivera breaks the hole, but Dunn comes right back with a takedown and the arm bar. One fall, 10 minute time of the match. Time limit just about uh, coming up, I imagine. There's a front arm bar now. Takes him down with that. Both gentlemen's arms are locked up. Now Dunn putting pressure on the chin of Matt Rivera. For the count of two over here. There's a count of two again. Rivera raises that right shoulder, gets it off the mat. There's a count of two again. Dick Dunn now going from the uh, front side. There's a count of one. 30 seconds remaining. In this first fall, they're near the ropes over here. And there's the break. Wrestler shake hands in the middle. Has a headlight by Dick Dunn. Pushes it into a, an arm bar from the rear side. Trying for the takedown. Dick Dunn. Asking for the submission himself. That's it. That's it. That's our first match this afternoon. And hey, I'll tell you what. Pretty doggone good. Dick Dunn. From East Lowry, Alabama. And Matt Rivera, 229 pounder from Puerto Rico, our first look at him, and I hope you enjoyed it. Both wrestlers, an excellent performance up in the ring. A draw was the official decision. We've got more coming up for you in just a minute. Tuesday night in Mobile, Alabama, a special Mardi Gras card, also a special bell time, 8.30. The main event, the Gulf Coast Tag Team Championship match, Ricky Fields and Bobby Fields against the Islanders. The semi-main event will be the wrestling pro against Rip Tyler for the Alabama State Belt of Rip Tyler. The wrestling pro is with us at Mike's side and has a little something All to right, say. All right, let about. me tell you something, uh, Mr. John Goss. A couple of weeks ago, I put my bet up against uh, Terry Latham, two weeks running. Now, Rip come in here hollering he wanted a championship match. Uh, he think he could beat me. Well, let me tell you something. I want a chance at his belt. I, that's the only way that I'll ever give him a chance at my belt is I get a chance at the Alabama State uh, belt. Rip. Tyler's got about 30 or 40 pounds on me, but I don't worry about that because let me tell you something. I am the Alabama, well, I will be the Alabama state champion just as quick as that match is over. Okay, don't miss that big card Tuesday night in Mobile, Alabama. Our next event, schedule one fall with a 15 minute time limit. One fall, 15 minutes. Introducing in the corner to my right from Richmond, Virginia, Diamond Lill. Diamond Lill, her opponent from Cherokee, North Carolina, Princess Little Dove. Little Dove, one fall, 15 minutes. Okay, Al, looks like uh, we have quite an exciting match come up. All the uh, matches I've ever seen, of course, with the midgets involved are very exciting, and the midget girls, they just put a little extra flavor. Here we go. Take it over, Al. All right, Diamond Lil with the first advantage. It was Princess Little Dog in the corner there trying to uh, get ready for the match, but Diamond Lil said no way, and now we're at it already. Our first look at the midget ladies in the 1977 Gulf Coast season. Into the turnbuckle, and uh, it's Princess Little Dove down, Diamond Lil on the attack, into the corner, into the turnbuckle again. Princess Little Dove wasting no time, forearm to the back, sends Little Dove down, through the ropes. Princess Little Dove is down and on the uh, tile floor here. Diamond Lil taking over right away. Princess Little Dove stunned. Trying to get back up into the ring, can't do it. She's kicked back out again by Diamond Lil. As you mentioned, John, there's uh, hardly a dull moment when these two get at it. Well, Princess Little Dove trying to get back in the ring, and her opponent's keeping her out. She's not going to defeat her out on the floor. But I tell you what, she's really bouncing her off of that terrazzo towel each time, Al. That definitely takes something out of you. She rolls under the little rope, the uh, bottom rope. Full on to the midsection against the rope by Diamond Lil, and down goes Princess Little Dove. Front headlock by Diamond Lil. 
Diamond Lear with a foot to the chest. To Princess Little Dove. There's a right to the midsection. And it's Princess Little Dove again. A forearm to the chest. Down goes Diamond Lear. Through the ropes. But Diamond Lear holds on. She's still in the ring. Now, Princess Little Dove's going to get ready. She was not completely undressed for this match. Now she is, and now she's ready. As you remember at the outset, she got attacked in her corner as she was getting ready. Drop kick. Down goes Diamond Lear. She steps out of the rope. Little Dove says, no way. Lips her through. Princess Little Dove to the attack. Body drop, down goes Simon Lill. For the count of one, the count of two, she bridges out. Princess Little Dove coming back, there's a right to the midsection. And a forearm smash to the back. Then Princess Little Dove down now. Simon Lill to the attack. By the hair, flips her once, flips her twice. Again. By the hair, no less. Into the rope. On top of the pin is Diamond Lil, the count of two, and that's it. Princess Little Dove bridges out just in time. Body slam by Diamond Lil, then a foot to the chin of Princess Little Dove. Diamond Lil signifying that she's ready. Into the ropes, using that rope to choke. Flips her back off. Referee Larry Block stepping in there. You better watch out. Diamond Lil with a choke right off the bat right there. Picked her up, dropped her again. Princess Little Dove down. Diamond Lil with a flip of the back. One more time. From the back side, there's a chin lock. Now she's pulling the hair from this side. Referee Larry Brock couldn't see it. Yeah, he did see it, though, cost of the break. Into the ropes again. There's the choke. Flips her back off, and down goes Princess Little Dove. Diamond Lil with a foot to the forehead. Knocked down. Front side, headlock now by Diamond Lil. Very close to a choke, but she slips that arm up there just in time. Now she's pulling the hair. Referee Larry Brock, when he got his hands full, caught him in the hair and called for the break. And on the break, a forearm. But there's a forearm from Princess Little Dove into the midsection. Oh, then a karate shot. To the chin, and Diamond Lil is down. Princess Little Dove on top. Another one to the throat. <laughs> Princess Little Dove now on the attack. Up by the hair comes Diamond Lil. Coming for the body slam. Go oh, down, go. Oh. Diamond Lil. Headlock. And down. She comes. For the count of one, the count of two, the count of three. It's Princess Little Dove, the winner. The Bulldog did it. The Bulldog did it, too. Diamond Lil and Princess Little Dove is the winner. Over Diamond Lil of Richmond, Virginia, Princess Little Dove from Cherokee, North Carolina. And an excellent match with the Midget Girls. We've got a lot more excitement coming up. Please stay with us. We'll be back in just a minute. Mobile, Alabama, a big special Mardi Gras card a card of champions, and, of course, a special bell time at 8.30. It's going to be a Gulf Coast Tag Team Championship match. We'll come back to that in a moment. The wrestling pro will be facing Rip Tyler for his Alabama Championship belt. Sonny King going up against the Super Assassin. Big John has a special match, and we'll talk about that one momentarily. Terry Lathan against Bad Boy Hines, and Phil Marder going up against Matt Rivera. Once again, the Islanders will figure in two big events. They're with us right now at Mike's side. And the first big event we're going to talk about is the fact that one of the Islanders was going to uh, go up against Big Bad John. This, of course, was ordered by the NWA, a single match for you. What about it? Last Tuesday night in Mobile, we almost, almost break your back, John. 
And you know what? You got a lot of nerves challenging us and go over there and crying on the alliance to get us in a single match. I'm not going to tell you which one is going to wrestle you, John. Both of us is going to be in that ring. We're going to flip a coin, and we're going to let you worry about it. Believe me, you are going to worry about it. All right, the next big match we want to mention to you is the fact that the Islanders are going up against Ricky and Bobby Fields for the Gulf Coast Tag Team Championship belts. I know if you That's what the whole thing is all about. We come here to win money, belt, and beat everything that we can get our hands to. Now it's coming down to the nitty gritty. It's just a matter of time. You people will see us wearing those beautiful belts around our waist because that's where they belong. What about the championship belt? Just like my brother said, we're going to go in there and get it, and that's it. That's what we gave me, and we're going to get it, and that's all. All right, once again, don't forget this big card coming up Tuesday night in Mobile, Alabama. The Islanders, of course, will be going up against Ricky and Bobby Fields for the Gulf Coast Tag Team Championship belts. Also, the wrestling pro going up against Rip Tyler for the Alabama State belt. Don't forget this coming up Tuesday in Mobile. In event... Ladies and gentlemen, our next event, a tag team match, scheduled best two out of three falls with TV time remaining. Best two out of three with TV time remaining. Introducing in the corner of our right with a combined weight of 580 pounds from the South Pacific, the Islanders. The Islanders. Their opponents weighing in at well over 300 pounds from Atlanta, Georgia Sweets. Georgia Sweets. His partner, 218 pounds from Mobile, one half of the Gulf Coast Tag Team Champions, Ricky Fields. Ricky Fields. Best two out of three TV time remaining. Thank you very much, Charlie Platt. And ladies and gentlemen, you, along with me and everybody here, are in for some excitement. Ricky Fields with Georgia Sweets, and what a hunk of man he is against one of the toughest teams to come along here in the South, the Islander, Ricky Fields, with an arm drag to the takedown. Up quickly comes one of the Islanders. One more time, Ricky Fields with a takedown. Islanders complaining about the use of the punch. Islanders tag out. Referee Larry Bronx asking him to watch the open fist and take down again by Ricky Fields. That's the fourth time, two times on each Islander. They said, come on, come on. Ricky Fields, a man of terror there right now, working over the Islander. Here's a wrist lock by Ricky Fields, and he's putting the pressure on now. Ricky Fields with the advantage, he's had it. Now he comes with some more pressure to that wrist lock. Ricky Fields, of course, teams up with Bobby Fields. They are the current Gulf Coast Tag Team Champion. But he's got a man in his corner for this edition. A man called Georgia Sweets from Atlanta, Georgia. There's the tag. The Islander holding on to Ricky Fields, but Ricky breaks out. One more time with a takedown. The fans love it. Comes into the arm bar. Now he comes over from the side and continues to hold on to that arm bar on the Islander. Two out of three falls for this one. Into the rope. The break by Fields. Ricky Fields and the Islander comes in with a headlock, does Fields. Now he switches, goes to the wrist lock. Good quick move by Ricky Fields. Comes down with an elbow in that thing and puts some pressure into it. There he goes. One more turn and down goes the Islander. Ricky Fields now with an arm bar. Hair used by the Islander, takedown on Fields. Now he works on the throat and looking for the tag out. He does tag out, Ricky Fields. In a, well, he wasn't in trouble, but he got back down and worked into the arm bar on the takedown. 
Ricky Fields showing some excellent quick moves. He's working over both these Islanders. <laughs> Stretching that arm bar. He's got his knee into the hip. And he's putting some pressure. Ricky Fields now from the front side. Now has the uh, arm bar from the front. A knee on the break by the Islander has Fields done momentarily into the rope. Comes back to an elbow in the chin. And down goes Ricky Fields. Georgia Sweets looking to tag out. Fields is stunned, running around, still trying to get away. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Georgia Sweets is in the ring. Ricky Fields take down. Georgia Sweets made sure that the Islanders did not get a rolling Ricky Field. Stretching that arm bar is Ricky Fields just where he left off on the left arm of the Islanders. by the Islanders into the ropes of double. Down goes Ricky Fields. He caught it in the chin two times into the ropes. Body drop on Ricky Fields, has him stunned, but May comes back with the right to the midsection, tags out, Georgia Sweet comes on in. Here's a big man, Georgia Sweet. On the Islander, headlock, and he's going to put some pressure on that head, I can tell you that. Oh, down goes Georgia Sweet. The Islander has him down, up, down he comes, looks for the pin of one, two, three. Georgia Sweet looks like he's out of it. Brought him right down on that neck, Al. Brought him right down on the neck. From up high, he carried him right on back. Georgia Sweets looks like he is uh, out of it momentarily, but the, uh, the fall belongs to the Islanders. The fall belongs to the Islanders. Georgia Sweets is being helped out of the ring by his partner, Ricky Fields. There's still a uh, fall to go, at least as is, of course, a two out of three. The Islanders winning the first one over Ricky Fields and Georgia Sweets. We've got more coming up in just a minute. Right here in Mobile, Alabama, a big special Mardi Gras card, a card of champions. Bell time, 8.30, two real big main events there with the belts at stake. But one of the events we want to tell you about, Big Bad John with the NWA sanction going up against one of the Islanders in a single match. John, you finally got John, what you want. John, that's not, uh, you know, let me, let me rephrase that, what you said just a touch here. It's not an NWA sanction, it's an NWA ordered match. It's an ordered match that one of the Islanders is going to have to get in the ring with me for 15 minutes. For 15 minutes. Now, I don't know if you people know. I'm six foot seven. I weigh 340 pounds. I've fought both of them dudes as hard as anybody can. I've had a little trouble with partners, this, that, and the other, Zabadai, but I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. When we crawl in the ring, it's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. That means... Flex your muscles as hard as you can flex them. Eat all the raw fish you can eat before you get there. Because I'm going to tell you, you're going to need a bunch of protein, brother. Bunch of protein. Because when I get in the ring with one of you dudes, I don't care which one it is, makes me no difference. Now, I'm not going to go into a long, long drawn-out story, John, about how they come into my motel room, took a two-by-four, whipped me across my back. Look at that. Took two discs. Two discs out of my lower back. I'm a fourth and fifth lumbar, but I'm going to tell you this. There is a reckoning day coming. The reckoning day is going to be Tuesday night in Mobile, Alabama. And when I get a hold of you, I ain't going to turn loose. I'm going to whip you for 15 minutes, and then I'm going to give the police and everybody another 30 minutes to get me off of you. 
Don't forget now, that's Tuesday night right here in Mobile, Alabama, special Mardi Gras card. Standing by to go up into the ring for this match at this time, and Big John is up there. As you can see, Al, uh, what is the condition well, of the Georgia Street? Georgia, Georgia Street is not going to be able to contend anymore. Okay. He John is trying. taking off his ring and his watch, and he's going up. He's going up into Listen. the ring. Listen, we signed the rest of his tag team. We done beat him. We done beat his partner. We don't need you, John. Now listen, John, you stick your nose in just a little bit too far. You didn't sign the rest of us. We signed the rest of us, Georgia, what he called Sweet Georgia. We done break his neck. Now we don't need you. If you want us bad enough, put your name in the list because you're... Coming over, pounding away, and the island is backing out. Ricky Fields and Big John both wanting him to come out. They are not coming out, though apparently they're not going to wrestle uh, Big Bad John as the partner here of Ricky Fields. Georgia Sweets was hurt, as we told you. He came down for the suplex up high on the back of his neck. That, of course, being administered by one of the islanders. He has been hurt bad, and Big John's coming up into the ring. Let's go. Come on, said Ricky. Let's go. The crowd. It's cheering. They want the Islanders. Rocky McGuire is coming out, going over into the dressing room. Is that going to be it? It's white. Islanders awarded the match. We told you before we don't want the match. We don't win it now. We don't beat them. What more do you want? Big John, your day come. Your day will come. We're going to hurt you so bad that you won't be able to come up here and run your mouth off like you always do. Listen, listen. John, we are sick and tired of you sticking your... Say it. John, we're going to catch you, John. You just try one more time, we're going to kill you. We're going to kill you. You're doing the best thing you do is running your mouth off, big John. John, we're going to suck every flat out of your body. You are. You scared? We ain't scared of you, we ain't scared of nobody. Just remember that. Big John and Ricky Fields telling them to get up in the ring. The Islanders refusing. They're leaving. They have been awarded the match. That is the end of this match. One fall, of course, being won by uh, the Here's Islanders the against Ricky Fields. That's it. That's it. And Big John saying, no, Ricky Fields is the winner. And Al, that may be the case. But uh, nevertheless, we're going to have to break it off at this point because the match is over. It has been awarded to the Islanders. They are the true winners, according to the official Larry Brock. We're going to be back with more action in just a moment. coming Tuesday night right here in Mobile, Alabama. Big card, a special Mardi Gras card, 8.30 bell time. The Gulf Coast Tag Team Championship match between Ricky Fields and Bobby Fields, the champions going up against the Islanders. Also, the Alabama Championship belt of Rip Tyler will be at stake against the Gulf Coast champion, the Wrestling Pro. Sonny King takes on the Super Assassin. A special 15-minute match will see Big John getting one of the Islanders, and the Islanders, of course, will toss a coin at ringside to see who will wrestle Big John. Terry Lathan taking on Bad Boy Hines, and also Phil Marder going up against Matt Rivera. Don't forget, that's this coming Tuesday night in Mobile. Once again, that big special main event, Ricky Fields and Bobby Fields, the current Gulf Coast Tag Team Champions, going up against the Islanders. Also, the Alabama Championship match with Rip Tyler, the current Alabama champion, going up against the wrestling pro, the current Gulf Coast champion for the Alabama belt. Don't miss it. Tuesday night right here in Mobile. Ladies and gentlemen, our standby match gave you one fall TV time remaining. One fall TV time remaining. This is a non-title match. Introducing in the corner to my right, weighing in at 236 pounds from the Southland, the current Gulf Coast heavyweight champion, the wrestling pro. The wrestling pro. His opponent, 265 pounds from Canada, the current Alabama state champion, Rip Tyler. Rip Tyler. One fall TV time remaining.
Okay, Al Roberts, back again. Just a little bit on that last match. The crowd here in the studio quite upset about the fact that Big John, of course, uh, was not permitted to wrestle as the partner there of Ricky Fields. Uh, the Islanders were awarded the win. Some people felt this was uh, not right, but, of course, uh, you and your partner must be able to come back out and continue the match. That is the ruling, and uh, they do not have to accept your substitute partner if they don't want to, and that, of course, how the decision was made. The Islanders did not have to. Frankly, I would love to have seen them uh, continue the match myself, just like the people here in our studio audience. That's a, I don't know why they won't fight Big John, but uh, they're going to one day. They've got right. to. All right, we've got a match in the ring right now, our standby match, TV time remaining, and I'll tell you what, you talk about two heavyweights, two, two real professionals, there they are, the wrestling pro in the white, of course, against Rip Tider. Rip Tider, the Alabama State Champion, and the uh, pro, the Gulf Coast Champion. Of course, this is a non-title match, but it's gonna be an exciting one. TV time remaining, our standby match, the wrestling pro, and Rip Tider. Rip Tider has his leg in the rope. And the break is forced. Pro coming up for a body slam. Down goes Rip Tider. Oh, Lord. Wrestling Pro on top of the count of one, the count of two, but the foot is on the rope. And Rip Tider has a moment of reprieve. And on the vague break, the Wrestling Pro puts a knee into the chin of Rip Tider. Two of the champions in the ring right now, Al, of course, Rip Tyler, the current Alabama champion, and the wrestling pro, the Gulf Coast champion. And you're going to see some real moves in this. They're really going to try to show each other which one is the true champion. Well, I guarantee you, it looks like two bull elephants going out there against each other. They are, when they hit the mat, they hit the mat, and you can hear it about a block away. Rip Tyler now with the advantage as he has the uh, leg locked up of the wrestling pro down with a knee into the toe hold. Rip Tider with the advantage on the left leg of the wrestling pro. As of course, we mentioned he is the Gulf Coast champion. And Rip Tider, the Alabama State champion. This is a non-title match. We'll remind you one more time. Tider still with a toe hold and putting some pressure on it. The pro kicked him off. Off the rope comes Rip Tider back into that. Now he has it locked up. Rip Tyler with a good move there to lock up the left leg of the wrestling pro. <laughs> Referee Larry Brock asking the pro if he submits, and the pro shakes his head no. Rip Tyler still working on the left leg of the wrestling pro. There's the toe hold now. Steps over one time, and then Tyler comes back down on it. Just stretches that knee. Yeah. Referee is still asking the pro, and the pro says no. Rip Tyler now with the advantage using the ropes. I believe he caught him. Yes, he did. Larry Brock caught uh, Rip Tyler using the ropes for a little leverage on that toe hole. On the break, he puts the knee into the thigh and then comes right back to step in. That's it. Oh, Referee Larry Brock still asking the pro if he submits. What to say, and speaking of champions here, Al, that uh, for those of you who do not know, uh, the NWA has a new world heavyweight champion. The uh, bout taking place not uh, oh, just several days ago up in uh, Montreal, to our understanding, Harley Race. Harley Race defeating Terry Funk. He is the new NWA heavyweight champion. And of course, they're the holder of the belt, and Harley Race had that belt for a short period previously, but again has taken the uh, NWA belt. Terry Funk held it for a long time, and uh, well, quite some time, of course. Jack Briscoe held it a little longer, I think, than a Terry Funk had. All right. Wrestlers locked up now in the ring. It's Rip Tyler and the Wrestling Pro in our standby match. The reason we want to mention that, Al, primarily is the fact that uh, we hope to in the near future, according to uh, Lee Fields and Rocky McGuire, hopefully have this uh, match in in which the belt changed hands uh, with these two great wrestlers, Terry Funk and Harley Race. Well, that's for sure. Right now, the pro working on Rip Tyler. Pro working on Rip Tyler. For the count of one, comes into an arm line. Arm bar on Rip Tider by the wrestling pro. 
Now he stretches it. Wrestling pro with the advantage on Rip Tyler. Referee, of course, always asking the wrestlers if they will submit. Just about every hold in wrestling is a submission hold. You've got to be strong enough to take it. Rip Tyler now in a uh, little agony as the pro has that arm bar on him, but the, the ripper now working on the head of the pro, trying to pull him over. The pro puts a little more pressure on that arm bar and forces the ripper to uh, release. Again, the ripper now up on one knee. And still the pro with the advantage on that arm line. Into the rope. Body block, down goes the ripper. Down goes the pro. And the pro comes right back out of that into the arm bar on Rip Tyler. Rip Tyler. Front body drop by the pro, or by the uh, Rip Tider. But the pro bounced out of that and comes back with the advantage on Rip Tider. Working again on that left arm of the Ripper is the wrestling pro. Referee Larry Brock still asking the Rip. He submits. Each time he does, the pro puts a little more pressure into the ropes, goes the pro. The rip misses the right. Down comes the pro with a takedown into an arm bar. There's a count of one. Ripper rolls over the pro on the count of two. Now the wrestling pro yells, grabbing my tight. Count of one again on Rip Tyler. Tyler again rolls the pro over for the count of two. And again, the pro complains of the use of the tights. The armbar from the front side applied by the wrestling pro on the left arm of Rip Tyler, the count of one. Tyler raises his shoulder. Wrestling pro up on one knee now. Al, speaking of... Uh, Champions again, of course, the former junior heavyweight champion Ken Mantell, which was in our area oh several months ago. We want to announce at this time that uh, he'll be making his appearance very soon on Studio Wrestling right here. He'll be wrestling in the Gulf Coast area, and we're really look looking forward to having Ken Mantell wrestling in our area. And once again, of course, he was the junior heavyweight champion for quite some time. So. Uh, we're looking for the very best wrestlers possible coming into the Gulf Coast area, and they will be here, and Ken Mantell is one of them. Excellent, excellent. A lot to look forward to here. Wrestling Pro now working on Rip Tider. And standing out now with me are the Islanders. You know, you're looking at the two, one of the two top professional wrestler heavyweights in the ring right now. Uh, I understand one of them guys hold the Alabama State belt and the other one holds the Gulf Coast. Well, we're here for one reason, which is like to check them out because it's just a matter of time. My brother and I feel very strongly that uh, look at a beautiful movie just made. Anyway, what we're here for is money, belts, single belts, tag team belts, and anything that we can get our hands on. Now, like I said, those two guys are very tough guys, but they lack a little thing that is a little bit better than they are. And, uh, it's just a matter of time for us before we can really, really get down and take both of them guys out away from them. Individually? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just a matter of time. Just a matter of time. You know, I remember uh, way back uh, a year ago, I think, and uh, I was playing, uh, the pro. Uh, when we were up in Atlanta around there, uh, we heard that this man broke somebody's back up there, and he's a very tough man here. And Rip is well known up in the Orient and the uh, Philippines all over there. So they both good, good wrestlers. They both strong and uh, uh, 
they're not. You you can't play around with them. Too. Uh, these two are very know what they're doing. They they've been in the wrestling business all their life, and they tough. So looking at that's a good uh, move right there. Showing how much experience that those got. And of course, uh, you can't take anything away from Rip Tyler. He's a uh, very competitor, and uh, we sort of like looking forward for a chance for us to go against him. Well, as you know, Rip holds the Alabama State belt, and uh, the pro is the uh, golf coach champion. That's right. Uh, you know, uh, like my brother say, we're going to take the tag team belt and uh, we're ready for both of them. You know, uh, uh, we don't mind uh, representing uh, Alabama. We, you know, we uh, we take it. You know, we take any belt. Single belt doesn't matter, you know. They're is. good. They're good wrestlers. Ain't no doubt about that. It's just like I said before, we're just a little bit better than them. I think we are. Well, we look forward to a match against those guys, then. So if you don't mind, we'd like to stick around here and watch the match. Quite well. It's the Rip Tyler now with uh, the advantage as the Islanders will stand right here and will observe these two gentlemen. You heard them mention that they want their belts too. Tyler, of course, the Alabama State Champion, the pro of the Gulf Coast Champion. And these two gentlemen are definitely going at each other. Now with a backbreaker comes. Pro has a very, very mean way of doing that. Wrestling pro now. Body down, he comes. Oh, man, take a small man who takes kind of one, the kind of two, but the fifty-something pounds thrown down on the ground like the way they do. That's going to be it. That's the time remaining. Like I said, it was a good match, but I feel this very strongly that we're better than they are. And one day we're going to be here with them belts, and we're going to show to these people that we can deserve the right to have those belts. Thank you. Well, they the, bell, the bells sound, Al. And they're, they're still going they're, in. Yeah, right, right. They're not stopping the Islanders. Uh, seeing how strong they are, of course, uh, certainly recognizing that these two men do hold the belt, do hold the belt at this time. One of them, of course, the Gulf Coast, the other Alabama. I tell you what, it takes a while for these two gentlemen to wind down, and it did take a time right there, but uh, referee Larry Brock, of course, got a call of a draw, but uh, neither referee wants to leave the ring. And, uh, well, that's about it anyway. That's we're, it. The match here is over. We're going to try to get them out of there. I don't know if we can. Uh, while we're looking on here, Al, why don't you give us a rundown of exactly what took place today on, on closing out here, and uh, uh, closing out with a fantastic match on top of that with oh, two real it. champions. Fantastic. As you saw, the match you just saw, Rip Tyler and the wrestling pro wrestling to a draw, and what a draw it was. The match right before that, the Islanders were awarded a tag team match against Ricky Fields and his partner, Georgia Sweets. Georgia Sweets was taken down with a suplex. Uh, he came down hard. He was not able to continue the match, and according to NWA rules, the Islanders did not agree to the new partner that Ricky Fields had picked out, who happened to be Big John, and uh, they decided they would not have any more of that. They had the legal right to do that, and they were awarded the match. And then the uh, midget girls, Diamond Lil and Princess Little Dove, an excellent match you saw this afternoon, and of course, Dick Dunn and Matt Rivera in our first match. Was a draw. Well, that was it. A lot of excitement on Gulf Coast Wrestling, of course. We hope you'll be back with us next week at this same time. and welcome again to another hour of Gulf Coast Wrestling as sanctioned by the NWA. We're glad to have you with us. And our big audience here today, our studio audience, getting ready to go and see a lot of fantastic wrestling. And right now, here's Al Roberts to tell us exactly what we're going to be seeing today. Al. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. Got an excellent card lined up this afternoon. Ricky Gibson is here. The Cajuns, Billy Spears, Ken Lucas back. Kurt Von Hess is here, the wrestling pro. And we'd like to introduce, first time to the Gulf Coast area, the Houdini of professional wrestling, Johnny Eagles. Johnny, welcome in. Thank you. Hi, Johnny. Glad to have you with us today. And tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, we've been looking forward to seeing you on Gulf Coast Wrestling and hearing so much about the Houdini of wrestling. And tell us uh, maybe a little bit about how you picked that up. Well, the Houdini of wrestling came from... Uh, I've devoted all my life to uh, counter holes. Right. I don't think there's a hole that's been made or that's uh, around that I can't get out of. That's my claim. Right. Uh, there might be, there might not. But I've never found a hole yet. Right. 
What about uh, what about the talent here in the Gulf Coast area you've seen thus far? Well, you know, it's uh, quite a pleasure for me to be in this area. I've been waiting for oh, maybe three years coming to this area now because it's it's what happens is I follow the best talent. Right. And I, I travel around the world following the best talent. And now I'm here where the best talent is. Right in this area, the Gulf Coast area has the top talent in the United States of America. And I'm from England and I've traveled the world. But this is where the best talent is, right here. Right in your own wrestling arenas, you'll see the top names and the top talent. And this is where it's all happening. Well, John Eagles, it's a pleasure to meet you. And you're going to be on our program today. I think you're wrestling with Ken Lucas there in a tag match. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing you here on Gulf Coast Wrestling Studio Wrestling. Thank okay? you very much. Thank Mike. you, John yeah, Eagles. One point clear that uh, the people out there, and only the best wrestlers here, the best fans are right out there in the Gulf Coast area. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you. So we know that. We're going to be back in a moment after this message. Louisiana, the Raging Cajun, Raging Cajun, accompanied at ringside by his manager, Billy Spears. His opponent, 230 pounds, from Pensacola, Florida, Ricky Gibson, Gibson, the ring official, Larry Brock. Hey, Ricky Gibson starting it off here against the Raging Cajun, and you can see the manager, Billy Spears, in the ring, having a few words to start it off with uh, Ricky Gibson. Gibson says, why don't you sit down in your chair? And uh, let's see, Larry Brock trying to get a little bit of organization going in there. Flip of the uh, wrist to Mr. Cajun, and here's Al Roberts to tell you all about it, Al. Cajun and Ricky Gibson. One fall, 10 minute time limit. Billy Spears. Cajun manager at ringside in a chair. And you can believe that Ricky Gibson will have an eye on Billy Spears as he tries to handle one of Billy Spears' Cajuns. The leg lock takedown by Ricky Gibson was broken by the ropes as a Cajun made it to the ropes. Action in the ring. Ricky Gibson and the Cajun. First action on this edition of Gulf Coast Wrestling. Welcome, everyone. Good card lined up. Ken Lucas, Kurt Von Hess, the wrestling pro and the Houdini of professional wrestling. You met him at the start of the program. Johnny Eagle will be on TV. So stay with us. Right now, Ricky Gibson has the arm lock. And the hammer lock on the Cajun. And there he goes, taking care of Billy Spears on the outside, too. He's got his hands full. We will say that. Nice takedown by Gibson. Goes into the head scissors. Continues the arm bar on the left arm of the Cajun. Ricky Gibson from Pensacola, Florida. The Raging Cajun from New Orleans, Louisiana. Gibson applies the pressure in the Cajun. Screaming out in pain. Gibson still applying the pressure. The Cajun's head is beginning to turn a different shade red right now. Billy Spears at ringside says, get your knee on his feet. You can get out that way. The Cajun cannot get the leverage he needs. 
Now he's up, breaks the hole, goes for the headlock, can't quite do it. Gibson slips out, goes into the hammerlock from the front side. Now wraps up in the figure four, leg drop by the Cajun. Gibson picks him over the top. Good move by Ricky Gibson. The Cajun has had enough for a minute. Steps outside the ring and listens to his manager, Billy Spears, give him a few pointers. by Ricky Gibson. He goes high with the feet, comes around again. Look at that takedown. Continues to hold the wrist lock. On the raging Cajun. Cajun leaned over, had the count of two on Gibson, but Gibson finally got it around and kicked him back. Billy Spears is up. Ricky Gibson will take an occasional look at Spears. Of course, referee Larry Brock has double duty, too, trying to watch a match and a man outside the ring. Cajun's up again. The count of one, the count of two. Cajun using the rope for leverage. The count of one, the count of two. Looks up again. Using the ropes again. This time Gibson comes back, kicks him back. Now the Cajun drapes his feet over the ropes, forcing the break, but Gibson won't break it clean that time, drags that foot down the forehead. Both of them are up. On the ropes. Referee calls for the break, clean break this time. All right, they lock up. Cajun using the hair into the turnbuckle, comes right with the forearm, another forearm, one more time. Then a body toss in the turnbuckle, Gibson hits awful hard. Cajun starting to move on now, has the forearm, one more body toss, off he comes, back body drop on Ricky Gibson from the Cajun. Cajun on top for the pin, a count of one, that's all. Gibson bridges out. Body toss again. Gibson holds on, comes back with the feet, down goes the Cajun. Body slam by Ricky Gibson. Up on top, step over, toe hold, wraps him up, look at this. Count of one, the count of two, the count of three, that's it. Billy Spears knew it. Billy Spears knew it. When he saw Gibson with a toe hold, he wrapped it up, started to walk away. He knew that was it, Ricky Gibson, the winner. Of our first match, we've got a lot more action coming your way. Please stay with it. Ruben has another partner. Tell us about your single That's match. right. It's not going to be Ruben now this week. It's coming week in Dothan. Spears has come down to the head on it. Now, it's you and I. It's been boiling for some time. You know, man, a couple of years ago when you were here, it was doing the same thing. Now, the thorn is still sticking to my side, so now, John, it's just him and I. Him and I in the ring, the Spears. You know what I've done to you, and I know what you've done to me. I'm not cutting you down because you are a tough competitor. You're tough, but man, the thorn is still sticking to my side. The one I need to take out. And the only way I can take it out is on you, my friend, is on you. So coming Friday night, it's going to boil down to you and I, Pally. And just one thing is going to happen. Somebody is not going to leave that ring. And baby, I'm going to be at 110%. I'm going to be ready. And be, bet you it's not going to be me. Don't forget the big match, a special match. Ricky Gibson against Billy Spears. Now let's move up into the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, our next event, 
please, please come back down. Thank you. Charlie, we threw it up to you, but uh, Kurt Von Hess comes out and says he has a special announcement he would like to make at this time. Kurt? Of course, I'd ask the fans this hand and they know that Ken Lucas has been using a chokehold instead of the legitimate sleeper. I have found one of the most hard-nosed wrestlers from Europe who's perfected the Cobra Hood, which is a version of the Sleeper Hood, a Russian stopper. And I have the gentleman here with me. As you can see, he's a very well-conditioned athlete, like my sense. And Lucas, your chalk hood, the days of this is number because this is the man here, this fine wrestler right here, who has the reputation to back his heart up. And he'll show you in any of the arenas. And all you so far wrestling fans, what he can do to you in a very short time. Okay, let's go back up into the ring. And now, after that introduction, we'll have Charlie Flanagan. Charlie? Ladies and gentlemen, our next event scheduled one fall, 10 minute time limit. One fall, 10 minutes. In the corner to my right, 250 pounds, Munich, West Germany, your current Gulf Coast heavyweight champion, Kurt Von Hess. Von Hess. His opponent, 218 pounds, from Pensacola, Florida, Michael Seitz. Michael Seitz, one fall, 10 minutes. Okay, it's Kurt Von Hess and Sykes starting it off here. Von Hess, of course, telling us about that Russian stomper and some of the fantastic holes that he has. Here's a takedown on Sykes by Von Hess, and here's Al Roberts to call it. Okay, John, thank you. Mike Sykes in against a tough one, Kurt Von Hess. Current Gulf Coast champion is introduced by Charlie Platt up in the ring. Von Hess working on Sykes. Had the count of one, but Sykes bridged down. Von Hess now with the wrist lock. Steps over with a head scissors, takedown. Sykes was in the ropes, bounced off though. The hold continues. Head scissors still being administered by Kurt Von Hess. On Mike Sykes, does the handstand, trying to come out, popped his head out of there. Good move by Mike Sykes. Getting out of that head scissors, administered by Kurt Von Hess. Von Hess, working on Mike Sykes. All right, both of them get up now. Von Hess wraps it around, brings him down. Both wrestlers' hands are still locked together. Von Hess releases now. Picks Sykes up by the hair and starts to work on that front face lock. Larry Brock looking for a choke. Doesn't see one. Going to move around now for a better look. Von Hess still. Now there's working on the choke. Referee catches him. One, two. Hess breaks on the count of three. On the choke hold, caught by referee Larry Brock. Von Hess just slipped that arm drag takedown. Jang gives him the elbow to the chin. Mayor takedown by Von Hess comes down with the head scissors from the backside. Wrapped up now, figure four. Von Hess still applying the pressure to Mike Sykes. Still working on him, still working on him. Von Hess still has that 
Figure four, leg lock on the head of Mike Seitz. Seitz pops out, gets the leg lock in his own. But Von Hess is right by the rope, grabs that second rope, and the break is called for by referee Larry Brock. Lock up in the middle. Von Hess drags him down. Still holding on with that bear hug. Sykes reaches for the ropes. That'll call for a break. But on the break, Sykes gets up, runs into an elbow from Von Hess. Body tossed into the turnbuckle. Sykes hits it hard. Elbow to the head again, and down goes Sykes. Kurt Von Hess with the advantage right now. Net breaker by Von Hess on Sykes. On top of the count of one. That's it. He picked him up. Von Hess picked him up. He another. Beat, he did. He another beat. net breaker. He's punishing him. And that's not sportsmanship. No, it's not. Now, referee Larry Brock says you better pin him. That's the second time. One more net breaker on Sykes. Down he goes. Von Hess on top of the count of one. The count of two. Larry pins him. Von Hess the winner. I don't particularly care for that one. Mike Sykes is still down. Three neck breakers on him. Finally did it. Von Hess finally stayed on top for the count of three to get the fall. We've got more action coming your way. Please stay with us. And I know Brockton ain't going to be wrestling to these young upstarts, these two brothers, Ricky and Roman Gibson. We are not interested in their abilities because we have got the greatest form out of wrestling, and that's knowledge. And a lot of the wrestling fans don't understand that. And we're being dosed in Alabama. With the humiliation by Ken Lucas to me last week of losing five hundred dollars will be avenged this week. Because I have as my partner against Lucas and this air pro who well, I will say take care of very, very easily, pro. Because I know your side. I know how to defeat you. He'll be right here. The Russian stopper. He'll say a few words about the sleeper and a few of the moves against Lucas. Mr. Lucas, my slipper hole is not a short hole like you've been using. I perfect the slipper hole. I'm going to use it on you, Mr. Lucas. I won't shoot you like you do. I'm going to just put you asleep, and you're going to sleep for a while. Believe me, Mr. Lucas, because the Russian stomper is on your way now, and the Russian stomper is going to show you going to use their cobra hole. Remember, Joseph Alabama, on Friday night, and the fur's gonna fly, and their hair's gonna come out of their head. All right, Kurt Von Hess and the Russian Stomper, talking about New Brockton and Dothan. Now, let's move up into the ring and Charlie Platt. Ladies and gentlemen, our next event, schedule best two or three falls, TV time remaining with a standby match. In the corner to my right, 231 pounds, New Orleans, Louisiana, the Raging Cajun. The Cajun. His partner, 225, Jacksonville, Florida, Billy Spears. Billy Spears. Their opponents, 227 pounds, Mesa, Arizona, Ken Lucas. Ken Lucas. His partner, 225, London, England, the Houdini of professional wrestling, Johnny Eagles. Johnny Eagles. Best two or three TV time remaining. Okay, a tremendous ovation for Johnny Eagles and Ken Lucas here on Gulf Coast Wrestling. 
and Billy Spears, the Raging Cajun, teaming up to take them on our next event. Raging Cajun starts off for his team, and Johnny Eagles, and here's Al Roberts for the action. Johnny Eagles. Against the Raging Cajun, the Cajun already complaining about the use of the hair. And Eagles, of course, says, no way did I use the hair on that clean break. Side headlock now by the Cajun. Eagle slips out of it. Did you see that move? Did you see that move? The Houdini of wrestling, you might just see some, some moves you haven't seen before. Again, the side headlock, and again, the Houdini, Johnny Eagle, slips out. In comes Billy Spears, a small smile comes across the face of Johnny Eagle. Spears is going to try the headlock. He can't hold it. Ken Lucas now has a smile on his face, and he's saying, Spears, try it again. All right, Billy does. Got the headlock. This time, Eagle slips out into the wrist lock. John, we've already seen one of the... <laughs> Mysterious, there's a full Nelson now by Billy Spear to see what Eagles does this time. Down and under, and he steps out. Look at that. John? Tremendous. I tell you, I've never seen a break like that before. I've never seen a break like that before. The man has muscle coordination that many wrestlers desire. Look at that. A beautiful move by Johnny Eagles with a wrist lock takedown. Tags out his partner, Ken Lucas. Charlie Platt, there's no doubt he's the Houdini of professional wrestling, Al Roberts. Already pulled a couple moves on you. Now Ken Lucas is in there with the wrist lock. Couple elbows, and in comes Johnny Eagles, comes down with a knee. One twist on the wrist. Johnny Eagles yanks it one more time on occasion, tags out. And Ken Lucas comes back in with a forearm to the upper arm of the Cajun. Lucas with an elbow. Fans at ringside yelling, go, Ken, go. Lucas with a wrist lock. Tags in Johnny Eagles. Comes in with a foot. Now Eagles with the arm bar. Cajun tags out. With Billy Spears. Eagles backs up and waits for Spears to step in. Oh, a good left. A quick left by Johnny Eagle sends Billy Spears staggering to the mat. That caught him pretty good. And there's one to the Cajun. It's Johnny Eagle doing his thing. Charlie Platt, Johnny, is mighty quick. He certainly is, Al. One of the fastest men in professional wrestling. Look at that. And a left. Billy Spears doesn't really know what to do. He's over there talking to one of his Cajuns, and I guarantee you they are both perplexed. Now the leg drop takedown by Billy Spears. The Houdini is up, wrapped in the figure four, and simply breaks the hole. Look at that. Fantastic. Ken Lucas steps in now. Billy Spears doesn't know what to do with Eagles, but now he has Ken Lucas to worry about, and Lucas has a side headlock. Spears with the body toss off, a block by Lucas, has Spears down, Spears is down, Lucas steps over, comes up with a side headlock, hip toss, take down. Ken Lucas with the advantage, side headlock on the floor, and one of the Cajuns tried to step in to help him out, but Johnny Eagles was right there with a forearm to protect his partner. Good looking team so far, this Ken Lucas and Johnny Eagles. Lucas tags out, Eagle steps in, takes over with a side headlock. Takedown to the mat continues, the advantage on the headlock. Johnny Eagles, we've seen some fantastic moves already, he's got a bunch of them. Head scissors now by Billy Spears, let's see Eagles. Working on it. Couple of moves. He's up. Still working on it, working his way out. Spears doesn't know what's going on. He's just watching him. Eagle's trying to work his way out and just pops out of it. Billy Spears doesn't know what to do. Did you see it? Johnny Eagle, the Houdini of professional wrestling. Billy Spears talking to his Cajun. 
They've tried the side headlock. They've tried the full Nelson, the head scissors. Eagles has broken out every one of them. Body tosses Eagle. But Eagles comes back with a body block. Spear steps right into the side headlock. Johnny Eagles working on Billy Spears. Again, Eagles is tossed in the ropes. He steps over Spears. Spears gets up and steps right back into the headlock. Spears tags his Cajun in. Then a Cajun gets a right and a spear. I mean, uh, Eagles comes right back with a left. Spears steps out of that ring mighty quickly. Now he goes over and talks to his partner, one of his Cajuns. Eagles tags in Ken Lucas. Ken Lucas and the Cajun now. Lock it up in the middle. Lucas slips around, gets that arm locked. From the backside, Ken Lucas with the advantage on the Cajun. Trying to reach the tag. There is a tag as the Cajun tags in. His partner and manager, Billy Spears. Arm drag takedown by Lucas. Nice move, arm bar. Lucas applying some more pressure. Tags in his partner, John Eagles. Eagles comes in with an elbow and takes over the arm bar from Ken Lucas. Spears. Swings and misses. Strike one. Body slam by Eagles. Steps on that foot. Again, he steps on it. Spears crawls to the corner. Tags in his partner, his Cajun. But there he goes, Johnny Eagles. Working on the Cajun. Steps on it, wrapping him up. Submission hole right away. Charlie, what is it? That is the Johnny Eagle Tower of London. Towers of London hold. All right, we've seen it. Thank you, Charlie. The Towers of London hold by Johnny Eagles wins the first fall for the team of Ken Lucas and Johnny Eagles. And ladies and gentlemen, you have seen some moves put on here by this Johnny Eagles, you know now why he is called the Houdini of professional wrestling. We've got another fall coming away. You better stay with us. Special matches all around, Billy Spears. You've got me at special matches. Let me tell you something. We'll talk about Panama City first of all. Panama City, we got them all in the ring. All of them in the ring. Ricky Gibson, Ruben, and you, Kenny Lucas. We got you all three in the ring at one time. And then I'm going to take you the final. Now, Friday night right here in Dothan, it's come down, Ricky, you were right. It's come right down to the wire. You and I right together alone in the ring. It would suit me even better if there was no referee around. Because I'm going to get you this time, Ricky. You're right, I'm a thorn in your side, but I'm going to stay there, and you know why. Nobody knows, but you know. Now, tonight in New Brockton, we've got this Johnny Eagles. Johnny Eagles, well, I'm going to see what kind of wrestler you are tonight in New Brockton, Johnny. And I think that you're not going to stand up to the caliber of wrestler that I am. Tonight in New Brockton, be there, my friend. All right, as we said, Ricky Spears, uh, uh, Ricky Gibson going up against uh, Billy Spears, a special match here in Dolphin Friday night at the Farm Center. Main event, an Alabama championship match. Johnny Eagles going up against the Blue Yankee. Also in a tag team match, Kurt Von Hess and the Stomper going up against Ken Lucas and the Pro. And, and uh, uh, we're back in the ring. I hurt my hand there on this uh, this last ball here. I've injured my hand just a little bit. I must have pulled a ligament or something in it. And I've got a lot of important matches coming up, so I'm going to let my other Cajun go in there and take my place on this next two falls here in this match. I'll get it, Bill. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, I've injured my hand some way here. I don't know. He, he kind of stomped. Billy Spears talking about the injury, weak, you know. injury to the hand there. And uh, we're going to be moving back up into the uh, area. Uh, are we ready? 
Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Billy Spears, for those of you just tuned in, is, has the other Cajun in the ring. He says that he is injured here, and this is why we have the other Cajun in the ring. Billy Spears standing by with us at ringside, and Al Roberts coming over to finish calling this match. Al, Billy Spears standing here, says he hurt his wrist, and the other Cajun will take his place. Okay, John. I uh, injured my hand some way there. I don't know. It's, uh, it's bothered me quite a bit here, and uh, I'm sure that the people don't want me out there with a with a hurt limb like I've got here. Now, the Houdini wouldn't have anything to do with that, would it? The what? The Houdini wouldn't have anything to do with that, would it? Well, I don't know. I think I might have done it myself because, uh, you know, uh, sometimes you do get a little clumsy in there, and I've kind of injured it a little bit. I think it'll be all right, but I've got a lot of important matches coming up. And I don't want to take any chances, you understand? All right, Billy Spears. He'll be at ringside here as now the Cajun. I've got a, I've got a little something I'd like to say here. I've uh, been negotiating with uh, the All Japan champion, the champion of All Japan. I have been negotiating with his manager, and I think that I have arranged to trade. It's gonna, it's gonna cost me a little bit, but I think that I have got it arranged where I'm gonna trade both of my Cajuns for the Japan champion. Now, I don't know for sure yet that I've got to get rid of You're going to just do away with the Cajun? Well, no, I'm not going to do away with them. Like I said, it's going to cost me a little money because it's the Japan, Japanese people are very shrewd businessmen, and it's gonna, if I, if I do it, it's going to cost me both of my Cajuns for this one man, but he is the champion of Japan, and we will be worth the money. Well, we'll watch for that. All right. I want to mention, too, that uh, Rocky McGuire always bringing some real special uh, people and talent into the Gulf Coast area. As always, we have just received word from Rocky that the new NWA Junior Heavyweight Champion, Nelson Royal, will be coming to the Gulf Coast in the near future. Fantastic news, John. Thank you. Good news. Matchmaker Rocky McGuire working on the new NWA Junior Heavyweight Champion, Nelson Royal. Coming to the Gulf Coast area. Stay with us. We'll tell you more later on our TV program. Be watching for Nelson Royal, the new NWA Junior Heavyweight Champion, coming into the Gulf Coast area. All right, matches in the progress up in the ring now with the Cajun working on Ken Lucas. And their manager, Billy Spears, who was one of the Cajun's partners, complaining of a sore hand, stepped out of the match and uh, has replaced himself with one of his Cajuns. Lucas rolls over into the corner where Johnny Eagles is waiting with a forearm. Down goes the Cajun. He's up quickly, though, in a side headlock to Ken Lucas. Passion, his partner, the other Cajun, who comes in with a right and another right. Working on Ken Lucas. Lucas with a head scissors quickly, but the Cajun reaches up, tags in with his partner, comes in with a foot. Now the Cajun on the choke on Ken Lucas. Referee Larry Brock calls for the break and is broken on the count of three. Cajun looking for a body slam, couldn't quite get it. Lucas steps back. Lucas with a right. Now the Cajun holds up. On one knee, begging for mercy. Lucas working on two of the Eagles is right behind him in case he needs help, but right now he doesn't need it. Ken Lucas yelling. He's pumped up now. The Cajuns are in there. Lucas with a boxer stance. He pushes the referee out of the way. He wants that Cajun. Locks it up. Ken Lucas. Hair takedown by the Cajun. Comes in with a foot to the chest. Now goes to the, well, tried the arm bar, but Lucas kicks out. Good move. Ken Lucas running around. Tags in Johnny Eagle. Eagles with a right and another right. The other Cajun is in. He's down now. Johnny Eagles working body toss. Eagles working on the Cajun. There's a hard right. Cajun is staggered. Billy Spears at ringside. Just distraught, nothing he can do. He's sitting there watching his Cajuns get pretty well eaten up right now by Johnny Eagles, who has. Both Cajuns slams his heads together. Fair takedown by Eagles in the corner, tagged in his partner, Ken Lucas. 
Johnny Eagles doing his thing. Lucas with a right. One tear twist to the arm for the wrist lock. Now, face down the cage into the mat with a couple of elbows. Tags in Johnny Eagles. Eagles comes in with a foot. Picks up that wrist lock again with one more twist. Johnny Eagles and Ken Lucas partnering up for this match and they're doing a great job. Cajun steps into the ring, but referee Larry Brock catches him just in time. Eagles tags out with his partner, Ken Lucas. Larry Brock asking if they tagged in. The fans say yes, and it will be allowed. They did tag in, they were right next to each other. There's the tag again as Lucas tags in his partner, Johnny Eagles. Eagles comes in. And now has the arm bar on the Cajun. Raisin Cajuns teaming up against Johnny Eagles and Ken Lucas. Billy Spears was the original partner of one of his Cajuns, but he injured his hand in the first fall, which the Cajuns and Billy Spears lost, and called in his other Cajun. So that's the situation right now. Ken Lucas with the wrist lock, putting some pressure on it. Cajun goes for the hair, drags Lucas into the corner. A right by the Cajun, Packin his partner. Comes in with a right to the midsection. Lucas is staggered momentarily. The Cajun working. Another right has Lucas again against the rope. One more right. Lucas comes right back with a right. Now looking for his partner. Couldn't quite find him. Again, comes back with a right. Staggers over, tags in Johnny Eagle. Eagles with a foot to the midsection. Johnny Eagles, body tossed into the rope. Cajun, back body drop. Eagles coming for the pin, count of one, count of two, not in time. The other Cajun is there to pull Johnny Eagles off and break the count. Eagles tags in his partner, Ken Lucas. Body toss in the rope. Cajun, there's a sleeper hole. Ken Lucas with a sleeper hole. Johnny Eagles over here holding the other Cajun. Billy Spears getting into the ring, trying to get into the ring. The bell has sounded. The bell has sounded, that's it. Ken Lucas, Johnny Eagles, the winner. The sleeper hold applied by Ken Lucas. Billy Spears is in there. He's saying now for Ken Lucas, of course, to wake up the Cajun. Okay, that's Ken Lucas and the sleeper hold, the one that, of course, uh, Kurt Von Hess and his newly acquired partner, the Russian stomper, of course, are talking about as being illegal. Ken Lucas, though, revives the man, and you saw it was not contested at all at that point by the official in the ring, Larry Brock. And so that's it. The sleeper hole wins it, and that's the match, uh, Al Roberts. Very exciting. Good tag team, isn't it? Yeah. John Eagles, Ken Lucas, the winner. Best two out of three. We've got more action coming your way. Please stay with us. And uh, you have a shot at the Alabama championship, John Eagles. That's correct. I came here to Gulf Coast Wrestling because this is where the top talent is. And I've got my first break. I'm against this uh, Blue Yankee for the championship. I'm out to get championship honors. The championship belt means money. That's what I'm here for, to meet the best competition and to make money. So I know Ken's got a hard match too. And Ken's looking forward to his match in a tag match with the pro. Uh, you couldn't find a better partner than I've got with John Eagles, but the pro is also a very fine athlete, yeah. John. And he's a very, very tough man. He's going to have to be very tough to go against Carl Von Hess and the Stomper. They're both two big men. They know the way around that ring very well, and they're going to give us a lot of competition next, ooh, next week. Right. That's Friday night here in Dalton. Also, you guys are featured over in New Brockton tonight. Yeah, and also, yes. I've right. heard nothing about Spears, Spears, Spears. Well, tonight, we're going to find out just how good that Spears is. All right. Our time is up. Let's go up into the ring. Hey. Gentlemen, our standby match. Schedule one fall with TV time remaining. One fall, TV time. In the corner to my right, 250 pounds, Munich, West Germany, Kurt Von Hess. Von Hess, his partner, 250 Moscow, the Russian stomper. The Russian stomper. Their opponents, 230, Pensacola, Florida, Ricky Gibson. Ricky Gibson. His partner, 236, the Southland, the wrestling pro. Pro. 
One fall, TV time remaining. All the people love them. Tag team matches, of course, more excitement. Four wrestlers going at it in the center of the ring. We just had one tag team match. Fantastic all the way. Now we have another. It's going to be the pro starting it off here against Kurt Von Hess. And as we told you a little earlier, too, there's been some controversy of the sleeper type hole that Ken Lucas, of course, used to win that uh, last fall with. The Russian stumper has what he calls the Cobra hole, which, of course, is a form of the sleeper that he says it is legal. That Ken Lucas has an illegal hole. Nevertheless, he was not called illegal a few moments ago, and he won that ball with him. The wrestling pro and Ricky Gibson teaming up here against Kurt Von Hess and the Russian Stomper. Von Hess up. The pro goes down as Kurt Von Hess did not go under him. He nevertheless elected to go for that leg of the wrestling pro. And the wrestling pro moves out very quickly as that leg is hurt. He tags in Ricky Gibson and the Russian Stomper is a takedown. Okay, Larry Brock on top of all the action. Fine little official in the ring for us. Russian Stomper, our first look at him. Special introduction on his behalf by Kurt Von Hess who is now climbing up on the rope, trying to make some kind of action toward the Russian stomper. And Ricky Gibson comes out of it and turns it around, but it's broken up as you saw as Kurt Von Hess comes in. Now, the wrestling pro is in. Is he in legal or illegal? Some say yes, some say no. Larry Brock leaves him in the ring though. Forearm smash, the Russian stomper and the pro comes off. Using a fist, says the Russian stomper, no. The pro says it was a forearm smash, not the fist. Scissors the leg, moves in, locks it up. Von Hess goes in, takes the pro off of the stomper. The Russian stomper finds himself on the backside by Ricky Gibson. Pro takes him over the top for a takedown, locks it up from the backside with a chin lock. Wrestling Pro applying pressure here. I want to remind you again, the new junior heavyweight NWA champs champion, Nelson Royal, will be coming to the Gulf Coast area in the near future. Gibson scissors the Russian stomper. He can't make the tag. Von Hess makes the tag, but I don't believe his other hand was on the turnbuckle. Nevertheless, the tag is allowed by the official. He's in the ring against Gibson, locks it up. Gibson has the uh, standing wrist lock. He slides out of into a hammerlock. Gibson comes back to the wrist lock. Beautiful move on the part of both wrestlers. 